What's up YouTube, Melton Metal Anthony here with another one. So today we're gonna go fix a loading dock uh, transition, I think is what you call it. And that right there is what we're gonna be fixing. You see it's bent up. What they did was they slid the forks underneath it, they bent it up. So we just need to go cut it out, replace it with a new piece of material, call it good. We're not gonna be taking the old Cummins over here. Um, the SAE 350 went bad, if you've seen that in my other video. Um, so instead today we're going to be taking El Coco, the snail. Yeah, we got my little guy right there. All right, so let's go get it done. Alright guys, so we're here at Metal Supermarkets in Tampa Bay. I do a little bit of business with these guys. This isn't my main metal distributor, but it's one of them. So let's go inside, pick up the piece of metal I need for this job, and then get it done. Okay, so this is actually my first time in here. So you can see they have a pretty, pretty good facility in here. And so neatly laying out is the piece of metal for me. Alright, so let's go in the office and uh, talk to that man right there and get him paid. Oh shit, I guess I gotta go around. Oh, <laughs> it's all right. All right, man, you're Cameron? Yes. All right, it's nice to meet you, man. I'm Anthony. All right. What I'm picking up today is a 74 and a half inch by 14 by quarter inch thick plate to go and use on this transition piece at this loading dock. It's pretty All right, man. So 172. Oh, okay. Hard, hard. Super quick. Super. Hey, it's a mm -hmm. pleasure meeting you, dude. You too. Have a great day. Come on back. You need help loading that up or you got Nah, I'll grab that thing. No right. problem. You too, buddy. All right guys, so I'm here. The loading dock is right inside that door. We'll go ahead and get a glimpse at that. So it looks like we've got another problem. Um, I just looked down on the ground where my truck was parked and uh, she's leaking quite a bit of oil. But we'll worry about that later. We're gonna go ahead and get this done. I get this knocked out and then we'll uh, figure out why the truck's leaking. So this is the culprit right here. And as you can tell, there's quite a lip right there. Time. The only thing that kept going through my mind every time I used a torch at this job is don't burn the place down. Don't burn the place down. At this point, I'm figuring out that there's actually a bunch of stuff wedged underneath of the plate itself and that's what's keeping the corner up. It wasn't so much that it was bent. Hey, come on. You're good. Come on. Yup. Keep coming. There you go. Now lift it up. I think that's good. You can back out. There we go. Yeah, you got it away so I should be able to get it. So the next problem we're having here is it's bolted down inside of there. I don't know if you can see that bolt, there it is. It's bolted in on the wall. Okay. This thing doesn't look bent. It looks like there's just stuff stuck underneath of it. So maybe we could put this back down, fix it. It may be bent now though. It looks like we might be able to just bend this back down because it doesn't look too crooked. And maybe if we got new 
redheads on it, it would pull itself back flat and then weld into those redheads and, and ground them flush. So we're gonna go ahead and try to do that. Um, I'm thinking because now that I'm seeing what's in there, I'm getting realizing that this is an L, which I kind of thought, and then it's bolted into the wall. There's nothing I can really do without removing this whole thing. So, yep. All right, so we got it apart, got it pried up. And what we're gonna do is try to get all the stuff out from underneath of it. Go ahead and cut those redhead bolts that you see all the way down. Get this thing back down flush and then try to maybe re-weld to those. And if that doesn't work, we're gonna drill new holes and then try to go ahead and redo that. So I'm out here at the Home Depot. I'm gonna pick up some redheads so we can complete this thing. We're gonna use the redheads to fasten it down, cut the top off, and then go ahead and weld it so it stays down. With the mistake I seen the last guys did was they just try to stick some thin set in there. And uh, they said as soon as they drove the forklift over, it exploded, which it's thin set. Of course, it's gonna do that. So uh, yeah, let's find these things and get this job done. All right, guys, so I just decided that instead of renting a hammer drill, I was just gonna go ahead and buy one. It's like 200 bucks. They throw in a four and a half inch angle grinder, which obviously I can use. We're gonna need some redheads. I got some half inch by three and three quarter. It says it's a 1200 pound pull strength. So that should be plenty for this application. And then of course, an SDS half inch bit so we can go ahead and knock those concrete holes out. All right, guys, let's get back to the job. When you're working on a site like this, you're gonna get interrupted. Uh, people are gonna ask you for help. Uh, you're gonna ask people for help. It's just kind of how it goes, as you'll see later in the video. But uh, right now, uh, one of the employees is gonna come over and ask me to give him a hand getting that loading ramp, ramp unhinged from the uh, trailer that's sitting there. I quickly realized that the mag drill was taking too much time and it kept slipping because of the angle of the ramp. So I went ahead and switched my torch. I was able to get a nice accurate cut with that. So I go ahead and I got this thing all back into place. We've got our new holes drilled. The reason we couldn't use the old holes is because the old redhead is gonna be below that. I can't drill through that. So we just need to move over a little bit. But if you look here, you'll see there's this arch. We wanna eliminate that. The only way I can think to do it, besides sitting here with a torch for 17 hours, is drill another hole right there and put a redhead in right there and then do what we're gonna do with the rest of these. Weld it to it, cut it, grind it, and flush it out as best we can. Hopefully nobody can slide a forklift underneath this after we're done. You got a razor blade on you, man? Safety rate. All I need is the tip. <laughs> so whenever I do redheads, I like to thread it till it's almost all the way threaded till the nut is just still above the uh, stud itself. And then I like to hammer on that so that gives me more uh, hammering surface rather than just hammering on the tip and, and possibly boogering the thread. It'd be a little bit more precise for that. All right, so here's what we got so far. We have our redheads all in, they're all tightened. 
But what we're having a problem with here now is this side's lifted. It's like it's transferred whatever was going on to that side to this side. So I'm gonna drill through this, drill through the concrete. We're gonna slam a redhead in this, just trying to get it flush tonight, okay? I use the mag drill on this section as to not pop the concrete with the torch. So everything's looking flush right here. We have a little bit of a lip still, but that's just because it's metal, metal sitting on top of concrete. I'm gonna go ahead back with the grinder when I'm done and just flush this out. So it has like a little bit of a ramp and you'd really be hard pressed to get a forklift underneath that. And then the rest of this is pretty well flush here. We're gonna need to take a little bit of a grinder to it, probably heat and beat this. Once I weld this, I'm gonna beat this down into the hole. And then, yeah, we're gonna go around, cut these one by one and uh, weld them down. So I definitely need a new magnet ground. So we went ahead and got the forklift out here because I couldn't get the bowing out with just that. So I'm gonna need the weight from the forklift. I need to find my socket. We'll go ahead and break this off real quick. Okay, so that's not gonna work. All right, so unfortunately my Metabo grinder got ran over, but luckily because it's a Metabo, it seems that it's as good as ever. So I'm gonna keep using it until it don't work no more. What am I gonna do if it happens? Part of this gig, you're gonna lose and break stuff. All right, so we got the forklift on the edge here. I was hoping that we could just use the anchors to hold it down, but it just doesn't seem to be working. So we're gonna go ahead and release this one quite a bit um that's probably as good as i can do hey man you want to pull forward just a little bit more with this i'll move out of the way obviously go ahead stop right there beautiful It seems to be holding down pretty well. Um, so, I mean, that works. I'm happy for that. So, we didn't need the metal. My truck's leaking oil pretty bad. And I got my Metabo ran over. I mean, it still runs my truck and so does the grinder. So things could be worse, but geez, this has been a rough day. At this point in the day, I'm kind of just switching back and forth between welding and grinding because I'm getting kind of tired of doing all one at once. So it's kind of a way that I keep myself going when, when things are starting to get a little rough. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up. We got this thing all welded out, all the trip hazards taken care of, which was that, that was their main concern. They wanted to make sure people weren't gonna trip. They also wanted to make sure that the uh, forklift couldn't get a fork underneath of it, and we've accomplished both. 
It's not the prettiest thing I've ever done, but that's a lot of this repair maintenance work. It really isn't pretty. But uh, anytime, anyway, God, I'm tired. Um, if you guys enjoyed what you saw here today, give me a like, give me a subscribe, leave a comment in the sections down below. Let me know how you felt about this repair. If you absolutely hated it, tell me. I don't care. But anyway, I'll see you next time. Keep on pushing rod. Keep on doing what you do. Have a great day.